All right, everybody, welcome back. In today's episode, we're gonna step away from inventory for a little bit, and we're gonna go ahead and start implementing Crouch. And we're gonna do this over multiple episodes because I wanna take this in segments. There's gonna be several topics that I wanna cover that we can cover all of these things just using the concept of crouching. So what I want to do is be able to press left shift, and when I press left shift, my player will crouch, and then he'll walk slower and be animated for that all right so the first thing we're going to want to do is come into the blueprints it's the ability system into abilities and then i can just make a new folder and call this crouch and in here i'm going to make a new blueprint class and this will be gameplay or excuse me rpg gameplay ability we need that because i need to say ga crouch and GA Crouch is going to be pretty straightforward. First thing we're going to notice is our input tag. So our input tag is we did all the input tags like back in episode eight. So we have a shift ability. I want to hold shift. And while I'm holding shift, I'm going to be crouching. So that also means before we get too farther deep into it, we need to come into the input, into the input config, and just add that to it. Remember, we don't have that. So we need shift ability is based off of input.shift ability. Okay, so now this will pass the input through. So we're gonna start pretty straightforward. And what we're gonna do is we are going to use get ability system component from actor info. And this will get you the avatar actors ability system components. So then we're gonna promote this to a variable that I just call owning ASC like this and then I'm gonna write a function and this function is gonna be called apply crouch effect and inside apply crouch effects I'm gonna take the owning ASC and just like we do in C++ it's all the same functions they're just blueprint versions of it we make an outgoing spec and to fill in the effect context I make effect context and then I don't have the gameplay effects. We'll get to that in a second. But then I can take the owning ASC and call apply gameplay effects back to self. And this is the spec handle where we just connect right here. And then I'm gonna promote this, this return value. If I promote it to variable, this is an active gameplay effect handle. We're gonna wanna track that. So this is active crouch effect is the name of it and that will just apply the crouch effect to ourselves. Now we're gonna make the gameplay effect class that we wanna go in there. So I need to come back to abilities crouch and then we're gonna make a blueprint class that's a gameplay effect. And we select this and this will be called GE crouch. And inside GE crouch, what I wanna do is award a gameplay tag that just tells the ability system component that we're crouching right now. So how we do that is you can use a gameplay effect to give a tag to the target who's getting the effect, which would be the player in this case. So in order to do that, the duration policy, however, has to have time. So it needs to be infinite or has duration. You cannot use instant gameplay effects to add tags to people. You can't do that. You have to be, it has to have a time to it so that it can remove it when it's done. So what we're gonna do is create an infinite gameplay effect with no period. And then I'm gonna add a component in the gameplay effect here, and this is going to be grant tags to target actor. But my thing is, is we don't have the tag that I want. So I'm gonna save all right here, and we're gonna come back into the code. And then, yeah, in the ability system, I have gameplay tags. We're gonna make a new namespace, RPG gameplay tags, and we can nest these. So we're gonna say player and then qualify state. And now we're inside player state, which I can UE declare, wow, gameplay tag X term, which would just be crouch. And you wanna do your player state tags inside C++ because you'll find they're very handy to use as you further get through your code. And you don't want player state tags to be editor only tags for sure. And we'll make a namespace and this is RPG gameplay tags player state 
which means I can UE define gameplay tag static of or comments of crouch and this is player dot state dot crouch and this is player is actively crouching we can do that and then while we're in code there's gonna be one other thing that we're gonna need to take care of so we might as well do it while we're here if I come back to the private section and I go to the character and I come back to our player character I'm gonna be in the constructor here right we'll be in the constructor way up at the top but I need to get character movement and from the character movement component there's something called nav agent props and inside the nav agent props there's a B can crouch and you need to set that equal to true if you don't then the engine functions the engine crouch doesn't work so now we can do that so let's recompile all right now that we're back in the editor let's open this up this is ga crouch but i need ge crouch because now we're gonna grant the newly minted player state crouch and we can close that because now i just need to apply ge crouch to him so now we're applying this and we're going to be granting this infinite gameplay effect that gives him this tag for an infinite duration so we're going to say apply crouch effect and then we could before we do this you know what we can clean this up i'm going to collapse these to a function right here i'm going to collapse these two to a function and i'm going to say cache essential vars which are it if you just need to cache some stuff at the beginning, let's just use this because the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say get avatar actor from actor info and then I'm, oops. And then I'm gonna drag off this and I'm going to cast to just character. I don't need the blueprint character. I just need the C++ character. And then you can promote that to a variable and call this avatar character. So we can do that. So now that we apply the crouch effect, then what we can do is take the avatar character and just call crouch, target his character. Now we're gonna use the engine crouch. So after we're crouching, then we're gonna drag off this. I highly recommend, I can't recommend this enough. Open this tab inside a gameplay ability and just type the word wait. And then scroll up and down and look at all these in the tasks section. These are gameplay ability tasks and gameplay tasks. These are asynchronous tasks that run off the game thread that do whatever you want it to do. And then it has asynchronous delegates that fire right back into the game thread, and right back into the ability flawlessly. We're going to go over making custom ones, but look at all these different ones you can do. And this is all async and it's already built for you. But the one we're going to want is wait input release. Now we want wait input release because if we come back into our code and we look at the ability system component, when we did the inputs, we have the ability input pressed and the ability input released. I mean, if you look in the ability input release, the only thing that happens is invoke replicated event that the input was released using the activation prediction key, right? So the reason you do the invoke replicated event is because that is required to trigger this ability task and then there's also wait input press so if you activate the ability and then you want to wait for them to push the input button again you can use wait input press but the only way those fire off is if you use invoke replicated event like this so now that we've already cleared that we need to do that now we could say now i have an on release and it will even give me the amount of time that the button was held down so before i do that i'm going to take the async task i'm going to promote this to a variable i'm going to say wait input release async task i'm going to put this in its own category because i don't usually do variables and categories but my tasks i like to do that and then on release all i'm going to do is call end ability right so we're gonna crouch apply the crouch effect give ourselves the tag and then when we release the button we just want to end the ability and what are we going to do in the end ability we're going to do a couple things we're going to take the avatar character and we're going to call uncrouch 
So now he's gonna, the engine uncrouch. And then we're gonna take the active crouch effect and off of this, you could just type remove and it opens up remove gameplay effects from owner with handle. So we're gonna remove this infinite effect so the tag will be removed off him. He'll no longer be in the player state crouch. And then the very, very, very last thing I like to do, I'm gonna create a function for this. I make this function inside every gameplay ability and it's called clean up async tasks because async tasks are a very easy way to get yourself stuck in a memory leak. If this ability is canceled the way that we have it written right now, if this ability is canceled for any other reason other than releasing the input button, then what happens is it never hits the on release and then kills itself, right? So now you're just going to have this object in the world, the ability, this ability is over, but that object is still in the world. And then when you activate crouch again, it's going to create another new object over and over and over. So we need to clean up the async tasks, however many you use. You need to promote them to a variable so you can clean them up at the end. So in the clean up async tasks, it's just two nodes over and over and over. You just is valid. And if it's valid, then you end task. And then you just do the same thing over and over. So if you have another async task, you would hook it up here and then you would hook up is not valid to there. So that way, whether this one is valid or not, this one gets checked as well, right? So uh, however many async tasks, you just line them up so that you can make sure you don't have memory leaks. And then we call clean up async tasks. Now, uh, one other thing I wanna check is, so I have the input tag. I don't have any of these yet. That's fine. Instancing policy. We are going to instance this per actor and we don't need to replicate it. This is local predicted. That's fine. And then the last thing we do now that I got all these set, the last thing we do is you have to give this to the player, right? So we need to come into data. Oh, we need to come into data and in the character class info, the character player default in the starting abilities, this isn't a passive ability, this is an active ability. So in the starting abilities, we need to grant him GA crouch. And then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna grab client, and we're gonna show debug ability system. Why did that not work? Show debug ability system. There we go. And then I'm gonna press shift. And there we go, I have player state crouch. And you see the camera shrunk down? You see this camera shrinking down? This is the engine function for crouch. What it's doing is shrinking your capsule collision and lowering your center. So if I come back to the player and I come back to this third person, if I take the capsule component and I type hidden and hidden in game, if I uncheck that and you watch what happens, you can see here, you see the capsule collision shrinks, right? Because he's crouching but I don't have any animations for this. And that's gonna be the next part is getting this animated to where this crouch resembles what you're doing.